错。<笑>
<laughs> or, you know, walk away slowly facing it because they throw things. And you don't want to get hit in the back of the head because you're not paying attention. So, you do have people, um, uh, just a dis disclosure, there are people who throw beads for sport. So, they throw beads at people who are not looking. So, it is going to hit you. So, just make sure you're careful of that. Not everybody's that kind of person, but I'm just saying, just, just be aware. We got uh, Harris Casino. Um, I don't know what's going on with this time. It looks like they're doing a little remodeling. Mm -hmm. But Harris Casino is our only legally allowed casino in the city of New Orleans. Um, they signed a 10 years here. Nobody else could come. So um, if you want to go in there, they usually open 24 hours a day. But you'll see gambling events at various bars and coffee shops and things like that. Also down here, you see that sign that says Riverwalk Outlet. That's our traditional downtown shopping mall. It connects from behind the Hilton all the way to the convention center. So they have all the traditional stores. Um, also, this is our ferry terminal here. Now, our ferry was still active up until Ida just happened. Even though they were doing construction, you could walk around to the back like you're going to the aquarium and still catch a ferry across the uh, Mississippi River. Now, on the other side of the Mississippi River is a city called Algiers. That's where the people of New Orleans first established uh, their colony when they first got over here in 1699. Me and Bill and his brother, Ivory Grill, they first landed over there. It wasn't until about 1819 years later before they realized that this side of the Bucure uh, made more sense because of its elevation. On average, the French Quarter is about 5 to 10 feet above sea level. The rest of New Orleans is about 5 to 15 feet below sea level. Mm. So we're going to be going to the bottom of the Super Bowl. Now also, if you want to do some high-end shopping, on the right, we got Canal Place at the bottom of the West End. Uh, that's where you find stores like Louis Vuitton, Second Avenue, Tiffany Club, Prada. And they have a 21 and up movie theater that you can go into. And if you hit the little button on your recliner chair, they'll bring your adult beverage right to you. So. Mm. Yep. Oh yeah. Consider the lady of New Orleans. She was a gift to us from France. They have an exact replica of her in France as well. The locals call her Joni on a pony. <laughs> now if you're down here for Mardi Gras season, she's always the first kickoff to the Mardi Gras festivities. She runs on King's Day, which is January 6th, the first parade of Mardi Gras. Um, also, when the Saints make it to the playoffs, somebody always faithfully climbs up there and puts the Saints jersey on her. So during the playoff time, not green, and they started making up a bunch of stuff. So we call that Hoodoo. Hollywood Super. Uh, this is actually a peaceful monarchy, earth-based religion. Uh, lots of overlap to Catholicism down here because Catholicism is also a monarchy religion. In Catholicism, you have saints and angels. In Guru, you have the initial law. These are the intermediators that go between the all-powerful being that's on top, and they both believe in one true God. Now, to not be executed or exiled, a lot of people were masquerade as Catholics. And still to this day, if you ask the practicer of Guru down here, what their uh, nationality, I mean not nationality, what their religion is, a lot of times they will say Catholic, including Marie de Beau, our voodoo queen. Maybe you're familiar with her, you guys seen American Horror Story season three, The Coven? Mm -hmm. She was played by Angela Bassett. She's actually buried over here in this cemetery, St. Louis number one. That's our first above ground cemetery in the city. It was founded in the 1700s. That is where Marie de Beau is buried, but unfortunately you cannot go in there because of um, the archdiocese shut it down when COVID happened. Um, nobody can go in that one, St. Louis number one or St. Louis number two, which is right down the street. Now, Marita Bell, as I said, she was a vote Catholic. On American Horror Story, they don't talk about any of that stuff. Um, the only thing they really got right on American Horror Story is that she lived in New Orleans and she was a hairstylist. That's about it. <laughs> what they don't talk about is that she was a very prominent hairstylist. She did the hair of like the politician's wives. Um, so she was very well connected to the community. Come to New Orleans without trying a beignet. I'm only eating one for now. I wasn't gonna get one later, but at this point. Oh, it is hot and ready. Hello. It's like funnel cake, but better. Way better. They good, huh? <laughs> I see you going in there.
I'm gonna have it right now. It's not good. <laughs> so this is Skeleton House. white looking building. That is Beyonce's New Orleans pad. Right here. Okay. Yep. And the house is so big that it occupies the full block. So uh, you'll be able to see the Spanish arch through the clearing right here uh, for her high windows. And then the back of it is pink. So now her sister Solange also has a house in the area. It's an old church as well. Not as quickly looking as Beyonce's though, but her Solange's is down 7th Street, way down there, about a half a mile. And you probably associated with food, but it's actually considered more of a nationality. Um, just like you would consider yourself black, white, Hispanic, Asian, whatever your demographic is, Creole and Cajun are signature to the people of Louisiana. Now, originally the Creole, it meant you were later born to New Orleans, of French or Spanish descent, and also Catholic. That expanded because the Creole men were greedy. They wanted to have their cake and eat it too. Went through these events called quadruple balls. So remember I told you Marita Bell was a quadruple and she was one quarter black? Mm -hmm. So the Creole men, the French or Spanish men, they would go to this ball to deal with the one quarter black women because marriage was not allowed because of that one drop rule. But you could date that person in secret, of course. So to the quadruple balls, it's like a big giant debutante fast ball. When they go there, they find a lady that they fancy, they'd opt to write a contract saying he was going to take care of her the rest of her life. He would buy her house, the house would be in her name. She would be financially shut forever. Marita Bell experienced that type of thing. But he could marry her still, but he could be married to somebody else before or after this whole contract happened. That's why I said he would only have his cake and eat it too. But also, if they had kids, the kids would be considered after rooms, which means they were one eighth black. So that practice went on for hundreds of years, going to the Creole, the French Spanish, Native American, and everybody that came down here, one big multi pot of culture. So now Creole is all different shades, and basically you associate yourself with Creole if you were a descendant of somebody who was natively born to New Orleans, like, you know, a couple uh, centuries ago. You know, going back to the Cajuns, Cajuns came from Canada. Uh, from a place called Nova Scotia, actually the city of Acadia, they were called Acadian. But um, somewhere along the line, if somebody was hard of hearing and had a heavy accent, they went from being Acadian to Acadian, and then there you go. But um, they lost the French Indian War, which you might call the Seven Year War. By the way, this is the piece of the Eiffel Tower off to the right. Let it get to us just like Journey on a Pony. Um, but they lost the French Indian War or the Seven Year War. They went back to France. And they didn't really fit in, even though they were French Canadian originally, their culture had changed so much. And so when they went over to France, they didn't really fit in. And uh, the people over there were like, well, we got this idea, you can go down to New Orleans. The mountains are filled with silver, the fruits are filled with gold. They got Native Americans that help you cultivate anything you can possibly think of. And they got oysters in the water you can flush out by hand and get those pearls. Yeah, where you do that at? Because they got here and all they thought was crazy one, crazy three, crazy four. Everybody's crazy. Everybody trying to kill each other. They had a bunch of territory wars. Everybody fighting over where they live, who they live, like on my side of the street, like all kind of stuff. So the Cajuns was like, you know what? Y'all got that. We don't want none of it. So they all went to the outskirts of town, out to the deltas and the byways and the waterways. That's why you see more authentic Cajun cuisine once you leave New Orleans, like going to a Baton Rouge or like a few swamp tour, like more out there. Um, now, Cajuns, of course, got more exotic game because that's what was in their vicinity. But you see a lot of mix and a lot of restaurants in the city, like Creole Cajun food. But um, like I said, the most authentic Cajuns you're going to get going outside the city. And then Jacobo's is one of the most popular ones in the city. Uh, but most of the ones are both increased cre uh, seafood and Creole food, uh, especially the French Quarter. Now, if you want something different, like a different variety, because eventually you get tired of eating Creole food. Um, so, they got a lot of good restaurants, but they don't all specialize in New Orleans cuisine. Like, we got Asian uh, restaurants, Spanish restaurants. Magazine Street is going to be the place you want to check out. Like, if you're looking for something, you're tired of seafood, you want something different, head to Magazine Street. They got a lot of variety, all different Johnny's food, Lebanese, Mediterranean, all that kind of stuff. So, you got a lot of good stuff. Okay. So, Ryan, listen.
dazu. <lacht> because I just need to charge my phone. It was dying after I went to the Jam Nola exhibit, but oh my God, this burger is fire. I was getting medium well. Um, I'm not really a french fry person, but I got french fries. Um, but yeah, everybody's here. I'm showing you the same thing. So it was awesome. Hey guys, so I am at the famous Superior Seafood place. So I'm gonna go in. Let's see what this food is about. Let's see if it lives up. Oops, I'm gonna get the crawfish mac and cheese and the fried alligator. Never had alligator before, so that's new. And then I'm gonna have, I feel like I'm gonna butcher it if I try. Um, pasta vu curry. I don't know. <laughs> You want to some Thank you! Oh, do you guys see this? We got oysters. Alligator, fried alligator bites. Never had alligator before. Got a frozen paloma, large. It's mad good. I'm about to dig in. Sorry, y'all. The lighting is trash in here. So, um, I just wanted to check in and say the food is bomb. Alligator bites, bomb. Crawfish mac and cheese. Mom. I want to eat like I have a BBL. <laughs> good morning, y'all. Good morning. Um, your girl's still sick. It's been two weeks now. I don't know what's going on. But I'm going to go to the doctor when I get back to New York. But um, had a late start this morning because I went to sleep pretty late. But um, I am planning as I go, which is new for me. I usually plan things out in advance, but I've been sick and didn't have any energy to plan, so I've just been doing everything on a whim. Um, <laughs> so uh, today I have a few things planned. Um, I'm going to Mardi Gras World. I'm going to a food tour, a walking food tour. And I'm also going to a haunted bus tour tonight. So that should be interesting. Um, still haven't figured out what I'm going to eat for breakfast. Um, but I don't want to eat too much because I don't want to be full on the tour. Because I heard that you get full like once you eat everything at each place. Because I think we're going to like three or four spots. spots. Um, so yeah, I'm excited. Um, I did have a massage booked for today, but I realized that I'm going to have to move it because I booked it at the same time as the haunted tour. So um, I'm gonna push that to tomorrow morning. It'll be nice to wake up and go to get a massage because they're not far from my hotel. Um, but yeah, that's what we're doing today. I'm really excited. I, I can't, I can't, you know, say it enough how excited I am, but um, I'm just really hungry right now. So that's all I'm focusing on. Let me see if I can just find something. Um, I don't want to be basic. I want to get some like New Orleans like food. So I'm about to do a little quick search and figure out what I could get. But yeah, see y'all soon. Hey peeps, so I'm out here in these New Orleans streets. Um, I couldn't do the Mardi Gras um, world tour because um, it shut down due to uh, Hurricane Ida. So I decided to take a nap because I'm still feeling sick, but I'm pushing through. Um, right now, I am in the French Quarter, and I'm going to be doing a food tour. So I'm going to the location where we're supposed to meet up. I'm actually early. Um, also, I had the best Uber driver just now. His name was Lance. Just gave him a five star and a tip because he's awesome. Conversation was great. Um, but yeah, 
So I am going to show you guys what I eat <laughs> once we get started. I didn't believe in ghosts at all. Matter of fact, when I get hired from Haunted History Tours um, a couple of years back, I'm thinking I'm going to do history tours, right? That's what my degree's in. They put me on a ghost tour, and I am planning on quitting my first night. And I took a few photos that night, just out of, just for whatever, just to say to prove that I was right and they were wrong. And I'm going to show you those pictures tonight. It truly has changed my opinion. I'm a firm believer now that there is something still on our plane that does not seem to be living anymore. Ryan Little. <laughs> I'll, every now and then I'll drive through here too just to kind of keep myself updated. And um, and you'll see the holes there, and they'll they'll be anywhere from two or three to a half a dozen of them. You know, fresh graves all the time. <laughs> so I went to Willie's Chicken, got me a six piece, got me a drink. There's a hurricane, um, but I'm about to go to a tropical aisle because I want my grenade. We can't come to New Orleans and not get a grenade. <laughs> Good morning, y'all. Oh, this lighting is nice. Um, my eyes a little swollen, so don't pay attention to that. But um, today I will be going all over the place because I don't really have a plan for today. Today's just like a self-care day because I leave tomorrow. Um, so I didn't eat breakfast yet. I literally just woke up. No, I'm lying. I woke up two hours ago, but I've just been chilling in bed and on Instagram, just chilling. Um, but yeah, I'm starting my day by going to Spirit Halloween. Then I'm gonna go into the city um, and just explore. I want to go on a streetcar. I want to experience that. 
Um, I've been trying to catch a second line band. Um, that's the ones that, you know, they go through the streets and then people have the white uh, napkins, I think, or flags and they wave them through the air and they dance and sing. So I'm trying to catch that today. Um, I also have a massage um, scheduled today. I had a schedule for yesterday, but I realized it was the same time as the haunted tour, which I really loved. Um, but yeah, so I'm doing that today at 8.30. Um, I don't know if I'm going to go to the restaurant because I have some leftovers from, I think, Monday. So, I don't know. Um, I might find one more restaurant that I want to try. But yeah, so now I'm about to go to Spirit Halloween. Ryan Little. <laughs> later at this point uh spirit halloween was a bust i didn't find the costumes that i wanted but it's okay i enjoyed walk walking through uh very interesting things that i saw <laughs> anywho as you can see i'm still sick and um not the biggest fan so most of the day will be self-care like i said earlier um i'm about to head into the city my uber's on the way so i could go to oceana grill that's actually one of the stops that um, we went to on the food tour and I was like, this tastes good. So I'm going back for like an actual like full meal. So um, I'm heading out in a bit. So I'll show you guys when I arrive. Ryan Little. <laughs> hey y'all, so this is the menu. Um, for my appetizer, I got the Louisiana crab meat cakes, and then for my meal, I think I'm gonna get the um, Taste of New Orleans right here. Just think of focus. Anywho, <laughs> um, I'm also gonna get two sides of the soft shell crab, and then for my drink, I'm getting a Bahama Mama. <clears throat> Doesn't look good. I've never had it before. Y'all, I started digging in before I could even record, but this is the crab cake. It's like smothered in like shrimp and stuff. Oh my god. It's a little spicy, but it tastes so good because I love using spicy food. Um, but if you're not used to spice, it might be too spicy for you, but this is really good. My eye is still swollen, but ignore that. Um, hopefully the sound is picking up because the fan is blowing and I got my headphones on. So. But these crab cakes? Fire. And I ordered my entree, so I'm just waiting for it. This is a perfect appetizer. I'm gonna have it right now. Hey y'all, so my meal is here. I got the two soft shell crab. Oh my gosh, some jambalaya. I'm ready. Hey guys, hey, just checking in. Food was great. Oh, at Oceana. Loved it so, so much. I am stuffed. Like, I feel like I didn't eat that much, but I guess I did. And I had another drink. I didn't see that, but um, I had ordered a uh, tropical something. I can't remember. Tropical Breeze? I don't remember, but it had rum. Delicious, because I love it some rum. But um, I'm not here in these new line streets. I am currently heading to T-Mobile because T-Mobile Tuesday and they are giving out blankets today. Like I said earlier, I don't, well, maybe I don't remember if I said it, but I was freezing on my flight here because I didn't dress warm. So um, the plane was super cold. My legs were freezing. So I am getting my blanket. It's free. Why not? So that's what I'm doing now. Uh, they're going to T-Mobile. I have to pull up and get my free uh, blanket. So I finally figured out how to get on streetcar. But it should be fun. Got a one day pass.
就好了。Guys, I had to pee really, really bad, and Starbucks was freaking closed. So I decided to find a restaurant that had a bathroom, and I found one a sushi restaurant. It's called Tsunami, it's mad nice in there. I'm about to show y'all. So fancy. Awesome. Gorgeous. In fact, um, I ordered food at the bar so I could just get that out of here. This is nice. Just had a bomb ass massage. She did a great job. Good morning, y'all. Don't mind my hair. I know it looks crazy. I just took out my bun, my top bun that I had in yesterday. So, um, well, I took it out last night because my head was feeling tight, but. Um, I'm heading out to the pool. It's my last day in New Orleans. My flight is at 3. Checkout is at 12. It's currently 10 a.m. I'm about to go to the pool for about an hour. Uh, maybe less. Maybe like 45 minutes. I'm already packed up. I'm ready to go. Um, still sick, by the way. Um, so I'm definitely going to the doctor as soon as I go home. I know it's not COVID, so don't worry. Because um, I got a PCR test before I left. And I was negative, so... Um, but I still need to know what's going on because I've been sick for like two weeks. But I'm not going to let that stop the fun. I'm going to the pool. You can see I'm already packed up. These are empty. This is garbage. Um, the only thing is that uh, I'm leaving this behind. I have bought some napkins, bowls, and stuff because I needed it for my first meal that first night. But they could keep that or throw it away. I don't really care. Um, I do have some OJ left. I'm gonna have that for breakfast. And I have some leftover pasta. Oh, and chicken? Oh my god. Well, I'm gonna warm it up and I'll probably just take it on the plane with me to eat. Um, well, not on the plane, like right before I get on the plane. But yeah, I'm all packed up. I'm ready to go. I bought this lemonade and I'm mad because <sighs> I really love lemonade, but I can't bring it with me. It's too big. But whatever. I'm packed. I have my clothes ready for when I get out the pool. Got my waterproof case so I could record in the pool. I usually do. Y'all seen this swimsuit before. I think I wore this in Dubai. But um, I love it. So I brought it again. But yeah, I'm about to go take a quick dip in the pool. I don't remember if I showed you guys the view. This is the courtyard. I think I showed you guys at night what it looked like. But this is what it looks like in the daytime. Okay. Looks like there's no one at the pool. Which is perfect. Because I'm going to float. Do absolutely nothing. Oh, yeah. I'm about to take a dip and a pull. Dip and a pull. If I dip, we dip, we dip.